got a mic on here. Welcome to worship at Northwest Hills United Methodist Church. My name is JJ. I serve as one of the pastors here, and we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Whether you're here in person or gathered with us online today, we hope that you are blessed by your time in worship. Uh, I need a, a couple of announcements. As we begin our time in worship, you'll find some of our order of worship in the bulletin for today. Um, and so I invite you to take a look at that if you like to. The words will be on the screen, but if you'd like to mark your hymnal, you can also do that as well. A couple of announcements as well. Following uh, this service, we'll be setting up for Rise Against Hunger in our youth building. Uh, so the setup will be between 12 and 1, and I think the packing will start at 1. Uh, we exceeded our goal of $8,500. I, I believe it was closer to ninety. $300, and so we will uh, be packing, instead of 25,000 meals, uh, over 27,000 meals uh, this afternoon. And so we thank you for the ways in which you uh, blessed um, our giving efforts uh, and that we might share God's love through providing a meal to those in need. A couple of other opportunities for mission coming up over the next month. Uh, on Monday, the 11th of October, we're going to be joining with Ready to Run, which is a running store across the street, and we're going to do uh, plogging, I think it's called, um, and that's going to be uh, walking or jogging or running and picking up trash uh, within our, our area. And so if you would like to be a part of that, I think it begins at 6.30 across the street at Ready to Run, um, and there'll be refreshments. They'll provide trash bags and gloves, um, and so I invite you, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, that's on Monday the 11th. On uh, Saturday, the 23rd, will be hands-on housing. Uh, we'll be partnering with uh, Bethany, Bethany United Methodist Church for that afternoon or day of ministry. Um, and so D. Susong is the contact person for hands-on housing. So there's a lot of different activities and upcoming events in the life of our church. I invite you to take a look at those. If any of those things uh, sparks your interest and you want more information about them, you can contact the church office or there's different emails throughout the bulletin as well for who to contact on those things. If you're gathering with us online uh, this morning and would like Holy Communion uh, following worship, I'll be over in the parking lot on Heart Lane uh, and ready to serve communion out there in the parking lot. So if you're gathering with us online, uh, we'd love to see you in person and be able to serve you Holy Communion in person following worship today as well. I think... Um, that is all of my announcements. I invite you to, if you haven't already, to fill out a registration and place that uh, in the offering plate as you leave today. Let us know uh, that you are here with us. And if you're online, let us know as well by going to our website and signing in. I think that is all of my announcements today. If you are helping with, hand, uh, with Rise Against Hunger, a couple of announcements. Um, you'll need some kind of head covering. And so a hat uh, will be great. If you don't have a hat, we will have hair nets for you. Um, I think I even have to put one on, even though I don't even think I have a hair on my head. Uh, only God knows, right? God knows every head, hair on our head. Um, so uh, he, he knows that, but um, invite you, if you want to help out, you'll need a hair hat or a hair net, and you'll also need to wear a mask while we are packing meals today. Uh, I think that is it. Let us stand for our call to worship. If you will read with me the bold type print. God, whose love is pouring over us, welcomes us here today. God, whose healing power is ready to bind up our wounds, welcomes us here today. God, whose transforming presence offers us hope and peace, welcomes us here today. Praise be to God who loves us heals, and restores us. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 632, uh, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether. Let us sing together.
have a seat, I would invite you to greet someone around you at the sign of peace and love. Let them know that you are grateful they are here in worship with you today. If you're with us online, we indeed greet you as well. Let us know you're watching this morning, um, and we hope that you are blessed by your time. You can have a seat as uh, we have our choir back with us today. Uh, we're excited about that, and they're going to lead us in our anthem.
Thank you, choir. It's good to have our choir uh, back with us um, as we begin the month of October. As we continue in worship, let us pray together um, a few moments of prayer as we pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon the reading and the um, proclamation of the word today. So let us pray. Gracious God, we love you and we thank you, uh, give you thanks for these words that have been passed down to us, Lord, these stories that we find in the Holy Scriptures that they might encourage us and remind us of your great love for us, that, that no matter what is going on in our life, your love remains steadfast. And so, God, may we have uh, the, the commitment, the faithfulness, the energy, the, the wisdom to know that uh, you love us so much. And you walk with us each and every day. God, I ask that you speak through me and in spite of me this, this day, that your word might be proclaimed and we might hear what you would have to say to us today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning I'll be reading from the book of Job. I'll be reading verse... Chapter 1, verse 1, and then I'll be jumping to chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. So chapter 1, 1 says, There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. In chapter 2, it says, One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There's no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone, out your, stretch out and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd which, with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So the book of Job is a complex work exploring the intricate intersection of divine sovereignty and human faith and innocent suffering. It's also a troubling work for many of us, many readers, because of the unsettling questions it poses to a neatly arranged, tidy faith. Unlike the, the, the words of wisdom literature of Proverbs, which maintains that, that righteousness is rewarded and sin is punished, here in Job we see this, this simplistic theological position challenged from the start. Job challenges the the easy, feel-good faith that is often proclaimed in place of the gospel news. You know, we're not reading a historical account here, but we're being asked to contemplate the weighty issues that arise in the course of the story. Our text for today, you know, is a quick summary. We don't get a, a picture of the whole, whole story, but we do find out that, that Job was, was introduced as, as blameless and upright, someone who feared God and turned away from evil. If you read through the rest of chapter 1, you see how, how blessed Job was. He had everything. 
And again, in chapter two, all throughout the book of Job, we, we see these words that Job was blameless and upright and, and someone who feared God and turned away from evil. Blameless and upright are marks of his character. Job was complete, undefiled, and uncompromised. He was the example of correct living. He did things correctly and, and right. In addition to that, he had a, a successful business and a, a, a large family and, follow, and faithfully followed God. As you read through the book of Job, you, you know the story of, of how Job experiences blow after blow and major life tragedies. In the first two chapters of the book, we, we see how Job loses his family and his farm and his, even his health in an attempt by Satan to try to get him to curse God and die. Even though Job deeply mourns and, and, and indulges in some self-pity, the text says that in spite of all of these things that, that happened in his life, he, he, he never sinned. The book of Job is a methodical story, an imaginative parable, all wrapped up in this presentation filled with poetry, which is meant to teach us a lesson. What lesson? As you read the book, you might see the lesson of faithfulness. You might see the lesson of commitment. You might see the, the lesson of how we can live correctly and rightly with God, and, and even the lesson that bad things happen to good people. That maybe those words of the Proverbs, there's another side of it as well. Today, the lesson we're going to look at is cultivating good practice and good habits that help us to live good lives, even in the face of difficulty. James Gustafsson has written that there's a contrast between a utilitarian religion that justifies religious faith by its benefits for human persons. And then another type of, of kind of uh, religion in which is more theocentric piety focused on serving God and God's purposes without reference to the self. So one is all about the self and the other one is uh, without reference to the self. Job articulates this idea in response to the question that, in which he says, shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? You see, someone who, who maybe had a utilitarian religion and justifies faith by its benefits of human persons would have a hard time making that statement. Job is depicted as a model of theocentric piety. In spite of all that he suffers, he persists in his integrity and love of God. He serves without expecting a reward. He does not put himself in the center of things. Through many of John Wesley's writings, he insists that everything that we have belongs ultimately to God, that it is placed in our care to use as God directs, and that God directs us to use it for the benefit of others once our basic needs are met. He has this whole thing of, of make all you can and save all you can and give all you can. Maybe you've heard that before. Extending to the principles of the rest of the creation, the Wesley's environmental ethics is also characterized as more theocentric. He portrayed the ideal relationship of humanity with creation modeled by Adam and Eve in the garden as one of the modest stewardship, where we devote our distinctive gifts to upholding God's intentions for the balance and flourishing of all of creation. All of creation. Christianity has historically been a religion of redemption focused on salvation of human. Wesley talks about all of creation. Having proper concern with human well-being motivates us to move towards eradication of disease and oppression, as well as help those who, who experience the effects of natural disasters as well as help those who are hungry, as we're going to do following worship today, that we might eliminate hunger by 2030.
Where do we find ourselves in creation? Did God make the world for the sake of humanity? Did God design the world in a way that people always get what they deserve? If they're good, everything works well, and if they're, if they're bad, they, they don't receive anything, and if they're good, then nothing bad should happen? If not, then human happiness is not the end for which God created the world. How might we have good practices that help us to understand and to, to live past uh, that if we are good and something bad happens, that we can remain faithful to God? How do we instill daily routines in our life that keep us close to God and close to each other, that help us do our part in healing the world, and that make our lives impactful? Little things that build upon one another and result in long-term payoffs, not only personally, but as a community of faith. Over time, we learn that good practice does not always ensure an easy life. Though we long for, for a formula approach to a good life, nothing in our lives is guaranteed. Suffering is not always the consequence of one's sin, and virtue does not always entail happiness. Job remained faithful. He remained courageous. He remained strong to his integrity. He remained true. You know, in talking about getting cut from uh, the basketball team in grade school, uh, Michael Jordan said on Jay Leno in 1997, Everything, everybody goes through disappointments. It's how you overcome these disappointments. I just wasn't good enough, he said. In terms of the best thing that could have happened to me, it was getting cut. Because it made me go back and get caught up with my skill level at my height. Can you imagine if Michael Jordan would have just given up trying when he got cut? When he, if he would have taken that experience and said, well, I guess I just wasn't good enough. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't God's plan. But he went back to work. Good practices are something to hang on to when the waves of life threaten to roll over us. You know, the temptation to give up and to not focus on the principles and convictions is always present for even the believer in the gospel. Can we accept the good from God without accepting the trouble? If you look at the trend when people fall into bad habits and lifestyles, so often it is right after a tragedy or a difficulty. Because it's in those moments that it's so easy to throw up our hands and to say, what good is it anyway? Why even try to live a blameless and upright life? Through good practices, we get a better understanding of, of how to make sense of the experience. We do this through reading scripture, by, by coming to worship, by, by our prayer life, and by our relationships with those who love us and care for us so deeply. It's not to say that we're never going to feel pain or question God, but it's a promise that eventually circumstances will maybe, maybe make sense, maybe they won't, but we'll know that God is at work through them. The last 18 months we've been in this pandemic. Can you, can, as, you, as you think about the pandemic, can you think of a gift that you've received even in the midst of a pandemic? I know for the last 18 months, so many people have had time to reevaluate and remember who they are and who they love and enjoy being with. We've seen people get outside in their neighborhood and, and maybe meet their neighbors for the first time. We've seen bike sales go out the roof as more people have become active with their life, getting on bicycles and riding around. We've seen people take up new hobbies, 
or maybe just have time to remember the hobby that they love. I've had people be more attentive to the needs of those around them and try to help meet those needs. It's not been an easy time, and it still isn't an easy time. We watch medical providers and teachers that are running on fumes. But through this time, we've also seen people be granted the opportunity to slow down and to remember who they are and what they're truly thankful for. You know, I think it's about these good practices of remembering how much God loves us, each one of us, and really looking for God in the midst of all that is going on each and every day, good and bad. Job knew his place within the story. He knew his place in relationship with God. He knew that all he had was a gift from God, nothing he earned or deserved. And I th think through this same understanding, we come to love God more deeply so that when the good and the bad come our way, and they will, that our good practices will be what carries us through so that we might, through God's grace, live a good life that is really life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we love you and we thank you for an opportunity to, to read maybe an old story or maybe we read it for the first time. Or, Lord, we see how you... Uh, even in the midst of devastation and heartache and how you walk with us, how you care for us. Lord, may we look for your presence. May our ears be attentive to hear. May our eyes see. May our hearts be open to your Holy Spirit. That no matter what's going on in our life, we might look and feel you. God, we thank you for this community. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would invite you to join me as you are able for the Apostles' Creed. The words can be found on the screen or as well as in the bulletin. I invite you to stand as able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. we continue in worship, I would invite you to turn to page 8 in your hymnal as we prepare to come to the table of the Lord. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. 
Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to continue over on page 9. If you'll read with me the bold type print. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in, remember, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for, for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf and the bread in which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Would those who are assisting please come forward? As you come forward today, you'll have a couple of ways to receive Holy Communion. Uh, one will be I'll break off a piece of bread and place that in your hands and invite you to take and, uh, one of the individual cups and take Holy Communion that way. 
You can also, if you like a prepackaged cup, Tyler will be in the back with the prepackaged cups. If that is more, um, if you like that during this time, we also have gluten-free wafers. If you like to receive a gluten-free wafer, let us know. We will have one of those for you as well. This is Christ's table. It's not a Methodist table or this church's table. All are welcome to come and to receive this gift that has been shared with us this day that we might know God is with us and working in us and through us today. The choir is going to be uh, singing as you come to communion. Following communion, following their music, we will serve them as well.
pray. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant us the strength and the boldness to go into the world to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. continue our gathering this morning as we come together as a people of prayer um, and go to God. We'll begin with celebrations. We have many things to celebrate today, which is always a really, really fun place to be. First off, as, as you're all well aware, whether you're in person or online, this Sunday we have our choir uh, back with us in person, which is such a joyous thing. We're reminded when we hear a choir the way in which the many voices mixed together, singing different parts to bring together one song that brings praise to God. We're reminded of Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians about the body of Christ and the way that many of us come together to form different functions and do different things in the name of God to make God's church um, the church that God calls us to be. So that's an awesome reminder that we see in the choir. And we're thrilled to have you all. So thank you for blessing us with your, with your voices and music this morning. I'm everywhere with my, my mic. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> um, as Pastor JJ mentioned earlier, uh, this Sunday after church, we also have our Rise Against Hunger event, and we are thrilled to be able to share that thanks to your faithfulness and your generosity and your giving, we raised $9,331.78, which will allow us to prepare over 27000 meals to be sent out to people who are experiencing hunger around the world. And 27,000 is a number that I honestly can't even fathom the size of that. And so it is an amazing thing that we're doing as a church to, again, um, gather in God's name to do God's work. So praise be to God for that. Um, Mike Shepard, one of our own, if you've been with us, you know we've been praying for him as he was diagnosed with COVID-19 as he and Maybeth were out traveling to celebrate their their anniversary. We're excited to announce that he has made a full recovery and that they have continued their travel and their celebration. So praise be to God for them. Um, you may also know we've been praying for a family uh, that Pastor JJ knows from Elgin. Uh, Lauren, the mother, uh, was also diagnosed with COVID and had a very serious reaction, was hospitalized. She was seven months pregnant at the time. They ended up inducing. She had her baby early. We're excited to also be able to say that Lauren and baby Emma are at home recovering and doing very well. So we're thankful for God's action there. And then finally, our pianist at the nine o'clock service, Angelo, and his wife, Jacqueline, welcomed in the birth of their uh, daughter this week. So praise be to God for that. Now, friends, we'll turn our attention to the prayer concerns that we bring together as a community. Margaret Arnold is asking for prayers for a good friend seeking God's wisdom and discernment in making a difficult decision about her living situation. We pray for God's presence for her. Kathy Doolittle's daughter, Susan, asks for prayers for her neighbor, Dick Baker, and his wife, Judy. Dick has been battling pancreatic cancer, and recently they have stopped treatment. He's gone into hospice care. So we ask for prayers for comfort and peace for Dick, Judy, and their family. Cody Parrott asks for prayers for his aunt, Joyce Reed, uh, who has been suffering from rapidly progressing Alzheimer's, and she's recently been moved into a hospice care and memory care facility. Uh, we ask for prayers of comfort for her family, and Joyce has been experiencing a lot of confusion and fear as she moves through this, so we pray that she can know God's peace, that she can feel the peace uh, of the Holy Spirit that surpasses all wisdom and understanding as God meets her in that place where she is. Uh, Dee Susong asks for prayers for her nephew, Eli, who is serving six months in the Navy brig and will be dishonorably discharged. She also asks for prayers for her sweet dog, Bonnie, who is experiencing some sort of neurological disorder and has lost the use of her back legs. Um, she went to the vet this week to try to get some diagnostic work done, so we pray for that. Uh, we continue to pray for Jean Marinas, who is actually joining us online today. So good morning, Jean. I'm glad that you could be here. Uh, we continue to pray for Gordon Hamilton, who is at home recovering from successful hip surgery last week. Uh, prayers for Dee's friend Lorraine, who is fighting breast cancer and has surgery scheduled for October 13th. 
Lorraine is currently undergoing her 16th round of chemo, so we pray for healing for her. We pray for Brenda Lee, who is recovering from home, for Chimp Pinkard, for recovery of health in prison. And finally, we continue to pray for our custodian, Ronnie Hawkins, who is once again uh, not with us this week as he is with family as they gather to mourn the sudden death of his nephew. Uh, friends, we do have some great birthdays to celebrate, though. October 2nd, uh, happy birthday yesterday, so belated, I suppose, to Alice Spoont, Cindy Stone, and Lavera Cornwall. October 3rd, today, we wish a happy birthday to Taylor Robertson and to Sherry Wilkeson. October 4th, happy birthday to Jessica Biggert and Ken Glasgow. October 5th, happy birthday to Robert Cummings. October 7th, happy birthday to Allison Church, Caroline Norman, and Kendall Payne. And finally, October 8th, happy birthday to Mike Rippon and Sterling Hayes. Friends, we lift up all of these prayer concerns, both the ones spoken and unspoken, as I invite you to take whatever posture of prayer you take when you go to God in prayer, as we as a community join our voices and our hearts to go to God in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come to you with thanksgiving and praise. We give you thanks for this amazing blessing that you have provided through Rise Against Hunger for this community. We thank you for the faithfulness and generosity of all of the people who have given and who have signed up to work this meal packing event today, that through um, your love that you share with us, God, we're able to respond to that love in the way that you call us to bring together our gifts and our time to prepare over 27,000 meals uh, for people experiencing hunger. We know in, in Luke when Mary is celebrating that she is pregnant and she has this hope of the world, Jesus Christ, growing in her womb, one of the things that she, she prays and she celebrates and she sings is that you, God, have given good things to the hungry. And we are just so thankful and awed that in your love, in your mercy, in your kindness, we are brought together as a community to participate in that work uh, that you prepared in advance for us to do, God. So we ask that you bless that food that is, is currently moving into this building, Lord, that you bless the hands that will be preparing that food, and that we pray um, a spiritual nourishment can go with that food as well, even more so than, than the physical food and the nourishment that that will provide and the healing that that will provide, God, we pray for a spiritual nourishment as well, that people can feel your love and your blessing, your kindness, your goodness, and your peace when they receive that meal, God. Lord, we pray once again for unity. It's amazing to have the choir together to hear all of their voices lifted up, disparate, different voices in different um, octaves and different words lifted in harmony to sing one song of praise to you. And it's just like that with us as a church, God. We know that just as there is one God, one baptism, one bread, one cup, there's also one church, God. We're called to be one unified body, and that when we are brought together through your Holy Spirit, Lord, we know that we together are a temple for your Holy Spirit. And God, we pray that you make that unity so there is so much division in our society these days, Lord. If you turn on the news, it seems to be all that we see, so much strife, so much fighting and arguing and separation. But we know that you call us to be something more, Lord. As a people of God, you call us to be united. You empower us to see past our human differences, to ignore the small things that separate us, and instead focus on the so much that we have in common, the way in which we are all created wonderfully and fearfully in your image, the way that we are all bound together in your love, the way that we are all freely forgiven, in your name and in your words. And we ask, God, that you can bring us together as a community, that we can do these good works that you've called us to. We ask this, Lord, even as we pray the things that have been spoken today and the things that we carry on our hearts silently, 
as we have the courage and perhaps today even the audacity, Lord, to raise our voices as one and pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. We continue our time of worship today with a presentation of our tithes and offerings. If you're joining us in person today, you know that we are not passing the plate uh, currently, but we do have offering plates stationed in the back of the sanctuary. So feel free on your way out, if you have not already, to drop a donation into there. If you don't feel like making a physical donation or if you're worshiping with us online, we have plenty of ways for you to give online as well. You can go to our website, nwhillsumc.org, click the donate button in the top right, and you will see uh, plenty of opportunities to give either online or via text that are there for you. We thank you so much for your faithful presentations of your gifts that you give to this community so that we can go out into the world and do the work that God calls us to do to make this world a more just and equitable place, to bring God's love to the places that it's most desperately needed. So thanks to you, church. Finally, I ask that you stand, if you are able, as we join our voices once more to sing the doxology this morning. I believe the words will be on the screen, but if not, you can find the words in your hymnal, uh, number 95 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
Friends, thank you. Thank you, each of you, for being here in worship with us this morning, for worshiping Jesus with us. Uh, we hope that you will uh, be blessed this week, knowing that God walks with you each and every moment, that you're never, never alone. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you now. Amen.